I'm standing in front of one of my swales that I dug last year. Now, a swale is basically a ditch on contour with the material that you pull out of the ditch, you put in the form of a berm downslope of the ditch. And basically what that does, it allows, uh, it basically slows down water, soaks and spreads it, and the berm becomes a tree growing system. So you can grow all your trees on the downslope berm and you can add your supporting species as well. Now, the way I dug them, I just took an, I just had an excavator, uh, did a bucket width, so it was about two feet wide and two feet deep, and, um, and then put all the material down slope, and then I refilled the material up with organic material, um, just about anything I could find, wood, um, grass clippings, uh, mulch, uh, you name it, I, I pretty much put it in the, in the ditches to try and fill it. Now, the big benefit of doing this type of a swale is that you do get the fertility of the organic material in your ditches feeding the downslope berm, so feeding your tree system. The negative is it is very expensive to, to if you don't have a lot of organic material on site and you gotta buy it in, it can be very, very expensive if you're doing a, you know, a pretty big ditch. It, can, it, it just ends up being a tremendous amount of material. And then also there's the, the labor or, or the machine and diesel fuel to, to get the material in the ditches. So since I don't have much organic material left to use for the long swale that I'm putting in, I'm doing things a little bit different, which I'll, which I'll show you in a, in a minute. This is a different style of swale. In this situation, I'm not going to fill the ditches up with organic material. So because I'm not going to fill the ditches up with organic material, the problem then becomes if you just dig a straight trench, you'll get a lot, you'll, the, the sides will just erode in on themselves. So uh, that could end up being a problem. So what you want to do is you've got to cut a 45 in, and you've got your flat area, and then a 45 up, and then you've got your berm over on the other side. And I'm going to go ahead and, and once this is done, this will all be seeded. All the trees and, and plants will be planted on the other side, and we'll have a, a, clo a mix of clover and wildflowers in the, in the trench area. I'm in the excavator, and I'm going to give a little bit of a tutorial on how to use this thing. Obviously, you can't see the controls, but uh, go ahead and get this thing started up. Um, Pretty, pretty. It's it, it actually is a, it actually is a. Uh, I mean, it's very a very fine piece of equipment. So I mean, you really have to you really have to be very careful with the controls. I mean, you got to be real smooth with the controls. Otherwise, you end up making a huge mess. So it takes a little bit of getting used to the controls, but. Uh, but once you get them, once you get going with it, it's actually uh, fairly simple to use. But it does take some practice and, and a little bit of experience. I've got about I don't know 50 hours or so of experience on an excavator, so I'm, I'm not necessarily an expert, but uh, but I got a pretty good idea of how to use one. I actually did hit a pipe today. I hit a uh, my uh, sewer cleanout pipe. Thankfully, I just took the top off of it, so we could, so we actually cut cut the pipe and put a new uh, lid on it, and uh, and then ran some, some 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 ran my hose through the cleanout to try to make sure we didn't get any uh, dirt clogging up the sewer. So I mean, you do have to be careful about uh, how you're digging and where you're digging hit something with this, I mean, you're going to break it, whatever it is that you hit. So what I'm doing first is I'm, I'm going ahead and digging, and I have pretty, I'm pretty good at keeping a constant depth, and, uh, and I know that if I keep that bucket, it's probably about four inches, maybe three inches above the surface there, and if I keep it like that, then I, uh, Pretty much have a good, uh, a good solid uh, depth where that, that depth pretty much stays the same. So it's pretty stay, stay fairly consistent, and that's important because you because if you vary your depth too much, you don't and you end up with a lot of hand labor, and you don't want to be digging that out by hand. That's no fun. So it does take some. The more careful you are with the excavator, the less handwork you end up having to do later. So it's probably better to spend the time on the machine and get it right. 
but you still end up having to do some hand raking because it's just not I mean you're just never gonna it's never gonna be as perfect as a, as a rake but we can do the hard stuff with this so now that I've got the uh, the, tr the main trench dug out then I'll go ahead and hit the hit the edge so I'll go ahead and hit the edge and this is a little tricky because I'm actually pulling I'm actually making it turn a little bit to try to keep it try to keep it on that edge the way I want otherwise because I'm, I'm off the line a little bit with the excavator I mean the, the other option is I'd have to move the machine which takes a long time so I'm sort of pulling it to the right as I'm pulling up this up the, uh, the soil so that way um, that way I can get the line that I want otherwise otherwise I'll, I'll, I'll pull off the off that little line and I won't and I won't really get that lift that I'm looking to, to, to cut so as you can see I'm sort of pulling and then you can use the I'm using the pressure from that berm to sort of to sort of feel it as I'm going forward so okay now I got the right side done let me go ahead and hit the other one and I'm doing the same thing here I'm pulling that lip good to sort of uh, check out your check out your um, your berm you know if you need for example if you, if you happen to need more soil in a certain spot on your berm because you want your berm to be relatively even too so I try to try not to dump it all in one spot make things easy on your hand labor or yourself if, if you're like me and you happen to be part of the hand labor. So that's pretty good. Okay, so now now that I've sort of done the sides, I gotta re-clean out the middle, which is pretty easy. So just kinda kinda clean that junk out. And it's pretty good topsoil, so I'll make in you can shake the shake the bucket a little bit like that shake it back and forth like that and that'll sort of get the material out of your bucket so that's ready to go for the tractor uh, and then the next thing you'll want to do is there's a little lever that pulls up the the uh, the digging bar there or the little bar that sort of stabilizes you if you don't have the bar down and you try to dig this thing goes all over the place so you definitely don't want to do that now I have my line behind me so I got to sort of sort of drive backwards along my line and I can see the line actually I can see the line a little bit better my white line that I painted on contour a little better from the front because of the sun but uh, I'm right on the line and I'm set back up and then I'm good to go so I'm ready to dig the next little stretch and then uh, so the next step, once I get all this dug with the excavator, is to go to the tractor.
unfortunately there really is no way around having to do a little bit of pan raking, which is not necessarily fun, but if we're going to get it right, the excavator and the tractor can only do so much. So the, the big thing for me is I'm trying not to have too much of a too much of a lip on these things because if we have too steep of the banks are too steep then we run the risk of having lots of erosion which we obviously we don't want um, so the other thing is so we'll do the we'll do rake the inside make sure it looks nice and neat and is relatively level on the bottom of the trench. The height of the berm you want to be relatively level too. Now, the width of the berm doesn't matter. I mean, it can be, you know, if you've got extra material, you can pull it further down, further down the slope if you want. But it's really the, uh, the slope and the height that's important. So we want to, as gradual as we can get, on the slope and then the height is the same. Like I said if we have extra material you can make the, the back slope a little bit a little bit lighter of a grade which is fine. That's not a problem. So basically spend another the raking's not that bad once you get the once you get the hard digging done breaking part really isn't that bad. The final thing that we have to be concerned about as far as the earthworks go, is just putting a spillway in. So we'll have to make a make a spillway on these swales, which is basically just a level sill, um, basically a, an area on the swale. If they if we get a real big storm, an area that the that the uh, swale can fill up and exit passively without really eroding it. But even that, I mean, it's not a uh, it's not something like a dam wall where it's like, oh, if it gets eroded, we, we've got a, a very expensive repair job coming. For a swale, I mean, it's a pretty simple, we can do, you can repair it probably with a wheelbarrow full of soil. So it's not like it's something that you, you're really scared about it uh, eroding or overflowing. <laughs> 